right? And I think, um, and then I think we can get accustomed to where we're comfortable, even if we're miserable, and not push ourselves into our strength. Yeah. And my work is very much about helping women and men be truly strong people, not the kind where you do dominance and submission in some form psychologically, but where you really are living into the strength. Uh, that in part is accessed through real integration with your body and your values. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you, you speak very um, strongly about women aren't sent here to service their husbands. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that not, no good is going to come from us feeling like we're just here to service them, take care of their needs. Um, we will resent them and never love them if we see them that, that, if we believe that's our relationship to men. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to be the slave of any man for life? <laughs> yes. Right. It just doesn't work. I mean, to, to, to say that we can bless one another, that's different, mm -hmm. but that's that we are equals who have a capacity to enrich one another's lives. Mm -hmm. If we can really bring our best selves to each other. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like, traditions of our fathers from you know yeah. obviously we've heard all these different comments you know don't ever enjoy it don't ever be yeah. just, you, don't, you know all these things that have influenced absolutely you. oh absolutely we have come by this honestly mm -hmm. just as men have come by a kind of superior or entitled position honestly or anxiety about their sexuality as being a force for ill. I mean, men feel like they're sexual because that's what they've been socialized into, but that they can do harm to a woman. So many men have a lot of ambivalence about their desire, mm -hmm. right? And so we've come by these false traditions honestly, but if we cleave to them too much, they, they undermine our ability to have the true joy through meaningful, intimate sexuality that we are capable of having and many people talk about that being transcendent, about really it's an access to the kind of a deep source of joy and anchoring in their lives that gives them strength to really cope with the imperfection that's around them throughout the rest of their day. Yeah. Well, and that's what I find is when a couple is doing well um, in the intimacy department sexually, it really sets a tone for how oh yeah. Marriage is running. Absolutely. It deeply impacts how happy people are in a marriage. And we, we, we diminish sex and desire as if it's like the stepchild of love, but in marriage, they really, if anything, love is the stepchild of desire. Now I know that sounds to some people like what, you know, how, this isn't, isn't this selfish, but see what I would say is that sex is by nature of what it is a sexual contract. It's the idea that I choose you and you choose me. Choice is at the core of marriage. It's, it's the non-biological love relationship. And so, and so because it's non-biological, um, it's about choice. And it's saying, I choose you to bring my sexuality to you for us to have an exclusive sexual relationship. And so if you're going to be loving, you need to treat that sexual relationship with care. How do we make it a good sexual relationship? How do we love each other through our sexuality? And so creating a meaningful sexual relationship is, is part of the fiber, the fabric of that relationship, of the core of it. You know, you, you chose that person to marry because they desired you. They love you. They care for you, right? But the kind of deep anchoring is in that sense of I choose you and you choose me. It's at its core a romantic paradigm. And so if you don't keep that paradigm alive um, and you diminish it as somehow being ungodly, right, mm -hmm. which many of us do once we get married, mm -hmm. then I think we deeply undermine our marriages. Mm -hmm. We just do. And so I'm often working with couples around, how, you know, what's going on in your emotional relationship deeply will affect your sexual relationship and vice versa. They impact each other, uh, but not to neglect it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's such a vital part and it's it's a shame that we don't talk about it more and prepare yeah. girls, yes. especially more, yes. you know, when they're younger and growing up and not being ashamed of their bodies and absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, it makes it all right. more um, 
important the work that you're doing. I just think it's, you know, it's so vital that we get the word out there. And, you know, I had my daughter, um, my daughter's actually been taking one of my courses that I, it's a live online course and I'm having her in part of the group. And after the sex one, you know, week eight, I always know I'm going to have follow-up phone calls, ladies, I'll, you know, I'll talk to you. Sure. And I called my daughter just to make sure she was okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she goes, I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm really mm -hmm. angry, mom. I'm angry that my whole life I was taught it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. And all of a sudden it's good. And now I messed up in my head a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. Grace that this is, that this is good. And I know really, many I'm women talk about this, that it's just that there's no integration premaritally. And it's very hard to create an intimate sexual relationship if you haven't on any level integrated your sexual nature as a good part of being a woman, a good part of being alive and something that you can share. We, we do it in the servicing frame. Mm -hmm. Like my sexuality exists to keep his sexuality under control. Mm -hmm. You know, like not good sex, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Where, no, I am a sexual being by my birthright. It's fundamental to being a woman. It It is good in the sense that God gave it to me. And what I can confident in its goodness is that knowing that how I use it will create goodness in my life and in this relationship. Yes. So, um, you know, but, but so many of us don't have that. And so I, my dissertation research was interviewing women who um, had grown up LDS or active currently and that transition into marriage. And for many women, it was a very hard transition in some, there was a loss of a sense of self that they'd gone from feeling sort of virginal and pure to now kind of losing something rather than an expansion of self through the sex, through sexuality. Um, and many like feeling like now I have to service my husband for eternity. And it immediately starts creating resentment, the feeling of invasion, because there's no sense of like identity with sexual, their sexual selves or their desires. And it's a very hard thing that we that our false traditions have created for our daughters but for our sons also yeah yeah mm -hmm. sure. i think it does go both ways in them yes being taught because i think a lot of times we assume men are people assume men just know absolutely and the idea that men should always be on top of it and that they're kind of you know and that it's not linked to intimacy for them mm -hmm. right that it's not linked to being known mm -hmm. And I think in some ways, because we give it so much cultural legitimacy that men can sort of claim it in a different way on some level. But I think we rob the personhood of men through their sexuality. Um, very much so like that we don't, that men feel like they have to be sort of sexual performers can create a lot of anxiety for men and an inability to actually show up intimately also. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, I had one other question from one of my ladies who said, you talk very confidently in one of your podcasts on our sexual relationship, not just his. Yes. And the, obviously that's the issue of women not being able to be good receivers and understanding, mm -hmm. you know, having a connection with their sexual selves. She says, how do you counsel women to overcome the guilt of receiving or the embarrassment of feeling equal in the realm of intimacy? We kind of been well, discussing that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, what she's saying is how do you overcome the anxiety of moving out of the culturally sanctioned one down position and the maritally um, customary position of being one down sexually or otherwise and really kind of take your space as a full partner mm -hmm. because you have to kind of believe in the legitimacy of yourself and your sexuality to take a position that's not getting a lot of cultural validation. Like many of the women say to me, what does it even look like when a woman is comfortable with her sexuality? They don't even have a picture in their mind they have either the harlot or the, you know, the restricted, you know, asexual woman. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that it means being able to create a picture that I know I deserve this, that I'm not going to keep standing down in order to keep equilibrium or to live down to the false traditions that I've been offered. 
I believe in that this is wrong and that I deserve to really tr take an equal space and that my, my femaleness and my sexuality are not inferior or need to be hidden. So it's a way of, of validating yourself mm -hmm. and believing in a God who is happy for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And believing that, that, you know, God wants you to live out to the, to the full of your potential and that your strength is not going to diminish your husband's strength mm -hmm. or his sexuality unless he needs you to be small so he can feel pretend big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's, and that, that's not helping and it's not healthy. It's like propping up immaturity in somebody and it only breeds resentment in you. Yeah. And so if you don't want to resent your husband, you need to live up to your strength. So how do you do it? It's daring to occupy that space, even though your brain's saying, no, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to feel ashamed. Go back to how we know how to do things. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to do that. But development is always about pushing yourself into territory that feels uncomfortable and tolerating the discomfort while reaching for what you know is right or better. That's what faith is. Yeah. And so, and it's when you do that, that your brain can organize around a new understanding and self-understanding and you get clearer and more confident. And when I look at my own life, I used to occupy one down all the time. I mean, it was just like the way I lived and it was really through pushing myself to see myself as an equal, even though I didn't feel like it, or I didn't think other people thought of me that way and really believing in a God that wanted me to do that and believed in me, gave me the strength to push myself towards being a stronger, more confident, more comfortable self so that I could move out of apology and into my strength. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm so grateful that I did that for myself because you start seeing the world more clearly, you start seeing yourself more clearly, and you're able to really be a person capable of intimacy and of really loving rather than staying in a kind of one down dependency that taxes you taxes your spouse and taxes your children when they watch you do it mm -hmm. well and i just really feel that intimacy sexuality is a gift given to us life is a challenge it's hard raising family right. you're busy it's hard trying to make it a living I almost feel like Heavenly Father's like, this is a reprieve for you mm -hmm. from the world. And absolutely, you're meant to feel excitement, joy, fun, closeness. Yes. It's not, to, it's not, you know, I often have had conversations where it's supposed to be all just, it's very beautiful. No, no I'm like, mm, no, no. I have that's boring. That, but <laughs> <laughs> right. So absolutely thoughts on that <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i mean i think it's a form of grown-up play and being able to play together in this way is very intimate mm -hmm. and there are times when you're just going to be in that i love you i'm so grateful for you i just want to look at you kind of sex certainly that can be a wonderful part of marriage but to somehow require that it must always be only that that it isn't a way of playing and sharing your silliness, which our erotic minds are quirky and weird. And to be able to accept that part of ourselves, I think is part of self-acceptance and the capacity for intimacy. Yeah. So, you know, absolutely. Um, I also would say, you know, when we're babies, we get to be fully enjoyed in all of our bodies. You know, we you were kissed and hugged and stroked and every roll of fat is adored. And all you had to do is bang your spoon and throw food and your parents would swoon. You know, like there's no, <laughs> you get full acceptance, right? Of the whole body. And then as you get older, you know, you, there's more privacy, there's more expectations, you get covered up. Then you go into adolescence and your sexuality starts emerging and you feel strange and weird and, and isolated. And so what we all desire is that kind of acceptance again. I mean, I think that's why we wax poetic about our first kiss is that it's that movement from isolation into acceptance and connection again. And it's what we want in our marriages to be accepted all the way through, to be loved and cuddled and kissed and touched and desired in the way we were as young children. And so when we can create the kind of friendship and self-acceptance in which that can happen, we do ourselves a great favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it's a whole nother part of life if they if you haven't been able to experience that's just going to open up for you and yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely it's like yeah i think it's the best part of life mm -hmm. if you're able to create that in your marriage you're one of the lucky few if you because it's such a rich source of freedom mm -hmm. and joy that i think we all long for but often will sabotage in our own marriages because we're afraid of actually having it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. We need to learn how to receive girls and we need to learn that we're worthy of it. And it's, it's, it's a gift that's been given to us as well. We're no less than yeah. them than our spouse, than our husbands, as far as sexuality is concerned. So definitely. Yeah. I love that. So you probably agree then those marriages that are, are doing really well, they're going to have a level of a healthy sexual relationship. Yes. And in my dissertation research, it wasn't really what I was expecting to find or see, but they also had a real sense of quality between them. Even if they said, oh, the husband's the leader of the home, even if they cleave to some of those ideals, in reality, they were very equal in decision-making and economic decision-making. Like they really were collaborators and they really functioned like psychologically as equals. And, and that was really striking for me to see that. And I think that's just really important for us to claim our place there. Yeah. Oh. God needs our strength. We throw it away when we step down. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's awesome. Well, Jennifer, how do these ladies find out about your courses? And I know you do, um, you do seminars all yeah. over the place. How do they find out this information? Sure. And maybe you can link to it so it's easier. But on my website, which is my name, finlaysonfife.com. So I have podcasts, some of them you referenced. So there's like a link um, there that can put you in touch with a lot of the podcasts I've done on perfectionism and lots of other topics. Um, and then there's also a workshop, I have online courses tab that I teach several courses um, on in both how to have a better relationship in your marriage, how to have a better sexual relationship in your marriage. And then a course on women's relationship to desire, both sexually and non-sexually, which is a lot of what we're talking about today, which is how to belong to ourselves more profoundly and to our sexuality. Um, and so I also do some workshops. And so what you also, there's a tab there for events and workshops that I do um, in two day workshops uh, that I offer to women on these topics around their sexuality and desire. They're currently sold out, um, all the ones that I have going, but I'll probably be offering some more in the next month or so. So, okay. That yeah, be, that will be great. Such valuable information for these ladies. Um, thank you so much. You've enlightened me. I'm looking forward to sharing this with all my ladies and they'll have that ability to have that same enlightening. And I'm just hoping that by all the people that you communicate with one by one, we're just going to change the paradigm of our, yes. how we teach this. And yes, so. we need to change it because, you know, um, I think living up to our you know, what I, as a, as an LDS woman myself, I talk a lot about living up to the best in our theology because it's all there for us, but we've often looked at it from a lens that limits us and there it's all there for us to see ourselves as strong co-creators of goodness. Mm -hmm. And we need to do that in our sexuality and in our marriages for the sake of all of us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. And I hope to someday make it to one of your seminars. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be fun. Fantastic. I would love it. So that I'd be great taking the time. You're, I know you're super busy. So taking the time to do this really meant a lot to us. So My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.